Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to another episode of Planetary Reviews. I'm here to talk about a game that is that is uh, free to play eventually, but right now you can pay for it to get early access, like about six months to a year early, because it's going to become free to play in 2018. And that game is Fortnite. This game is a very interesting game to talk about. So let's just start off with the basics. First things first, this game is pretty much a survival slash building slash mining and finding resources slash micromanaging squads and stuff like that and getting epic weapons, epic gear and legendary things. It's a combination of a lot of games. But first and foremost, in my opinion, it is a third person survival like shooting hordes of zombies type of game while fortifying some defenses. So it's tower defense combined with horde mode combined with Minecraft. Trying to think of a good way to describe it. That's the best way I could describe Fortnite. Pretty much. I'm trying to think if there's any other way to put it, but I think that's pretty much the way I could put it. But let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is very solid. The, when you're shooting with like a shotgun, a pistol, a sniper rifle, using a melee weapon, using your pickaxe to mine, it all feels great. Every gun has like that good feeling of kickback when you're shooting. Every gun feels different. It feels good to shoot a gun in this game. The melee weapons are a little eh, but you know what? They're melee weapons. They're not going to feel the same way as the guns. I personally prefer guns because I just love different types of weapons. I love LMGs, pistols, snipers. I like switching between all of them and using them. Not really a melee guy, but they're cool if you're there. And there's even a class for you called the Assassin where that is pretty much their thing. They love melee weapons and if it's your thing, it's your thing. Speaking of different heroes and stuff like that, there are pretty much four heroes. There is the tank. And then there is the melee weapon ninja class, the soldier class, and then there is a class with the outlander class that runs around and is really good at finding resources. Every class in this game feels unique and very important to the team. The constructor or the tank, I think they're in the same category. I, I just consider the tank is a big guy. They pretty much have a great talent for building. They're really good at it. They can do different kinds of things and you could use them to help fortify an area that you have to defend while you send out the soldier to help destroy some zombies or husk as they're called in this game because they're not zombies they pretty much appear when a storm happens and it generates these creatures called husk and you get different variations and you have to kill them so you can have the constructor staying over there building some awesome bases you could send out the, the uh, ninja and the soldier to defend the base and run around and kill things then you can have the Outlander before the mission officially begins. You can have him or her run around and gather resources for everybody and do stuff like that. The team aspect of this game is really cool. When you're playing with friends, this game really shines. It's really cool to have somebody that's a melee person be there and then talk to him and strategize with him. Have a constructor there strategize with them. Have the outline Outlander strategize with them. It's a really cool team-based game that I really enjoy. And I think that aspect of the game is super strong. Gameplay is solid, and all the heroes feel important and play a very integral role in the gameplay. Next thing I want to talk about is that building different structures is very fun. At the end of the day, every person, every class can build stuff. Obviously, the constructor has some nat has a more of a talent for it, but every class can build structures. You can build structures from wood, brick, metal, and then later on as you go through the skill tree, the, uh, speaking of skill trees, there are a lot of things to unlock in the progression system. This game, you're going to be playing a lot, a lot, a lot before you unlock everything that is available in, in these trees. But anyway, and that, that is a very good thing. I like the fact that they really want, they're really incentivizing you to keep playing so that you can unlock more skills, unlock more abilities, unlock different things. A lot of reasons to keep you going and keep playing. But when you build structures, at first they can look really simple, but then as you get through the game and you learn the different intricacies of how to build things, you can make some pretty amazing structures with cool arches, with cool hallways, with cool traps to defend yourself from the husk. The building in this game feels fun. I love it. I love breaking things, breaking them down, going, building a cool fort, and defending it from these like creatures. It was really cool. And also, the creatures in this game are pretty cool. There's not too many variety. I mean, you do get a couple, 
but at the end of the day, it doesn't feel super challenging. They can get a little tense sometimes where it's like, oh man, look at that. There's a bunch of them coming up and you have to shoot them all, shoot them all, shoot them all. And for the most part, it isn't too hard, but it does feel very tense. And it does get a little hectic when a lot of enemies start to pile up and really make you guys have to band together and destroy. Especially when they come at you from different areas of the map at the same time. Very tense moments. And the next thing, I gotta say, the graphics in this game are very good for what they were going for. Very fun, cartoony, very happy look to it. I love the art design. I love art designs like this. It looks very nice, cheerful. When I turn on the game, it feels nice. It's happy. It's a very happy game, even though we're in a pretty dire situation with, like, these husks taking over the world. But you know what? The art style is beautiful, and I like it. So kudos to that. The next thing I gotta say... The co-op in this game is where it also shines, like I said. Co-op is fantastic. Playing with a team of just your friends will keep you guys going for a while. This game shines with co-op gameplay. And if you're a fan of horde modes, tower defense, and co-op games and third-person shooters, this is right down your alley, because all that combined is really awesome. And the next thing I want to talk about, the crafting system in this game. In the beginning, you might get a little overwhelmed, but the crafting system, after you get used to it, isn't too hard. To make certain traps, you need certain uh, certain items that you find out in the world and different maps. Like, you can make healing pads where you need some herbs and some plants and flowers and some bacon, believe it or not. You need to go through vending machines, collect it, and build it. And it's not too hard. In the beginning, you'll, you'll be sitting there in the menus. I admit it's a little daunting being like, wow, there's so much stuff in this game. How do I begin? It is daunting in the beginning and a little overwhelming. But the game does do a decent job at trying to teach you everything while also letting you learn on your own. But I will admit it does get a little overwhelming in the beginning. But if you keep at it and you keep trying, I promise you, you will enjoy that. The next thing I want to talk about is the progression system in this game is excellent. You're always feeling like you're unlocking things just from playing the game. And that's the best thing that a game like this can do. Always make you feel like you're progressing, unlocking things, making your gameplay feel worth it. Because yes, there are microtransactions in this game. I know not many of us like that. I don't like microtransactions either, but in this game, I feel like you don't necessarily need to buy them. You don't need to buy them if you play this game a lot. You're playing the game, you're finding resources, you're crafting things. If you do good jobs in your mission, do a lot of the side things in the missions when you're out there, you will unlock these treasure chests and get different categories of them. And the more things you do out there in the world, the higher level chests you will unlock. And those chests are pretty nice. They give you some decent stuff. They give you these pin they give you these uh pinata llama things, which is pretty much what the loot crates of this game look like. Where you get a llama, you break it, and you get a certain amount of stuff that comes out that could either be, as we all know, the rare, the uncommon, the epic, and the legendary. And this game feels feels pretty generous. It does give me a decent amount of epics. I do find epics being dropped a lot more than other games. And I do enjoy it. It feels fair and I don't feel like I have to go, oh man, I need to go pay and give money to this game. But let's talk about some of the things. As much as I do love this game, as I just said, a lot of good positives. Let me talk about some of the things that aren't so great. This game, since it is an early access, it is not going to be perfect. There are some issues. Sometimes I think it's either lag or sometimes the frame rate does drop. That's just what I was noticing during the game. I couldn't tell. Sometimes I think it was lag, but there were not too many. But when a lot of stuff is going on on screen, I do think the game begins to suffer a little bit where the frame rate does drop. But then also I had a couple times where the game did crash on me. I was able to capture that, but always when I'm recording, nothing bad happens. But it, it did crash a couple times. So that was a little unfortunate. Also, the game can become a little repetitive because of the fact that the game is not just an open world, you're running around with your friends doing things, it's mission based. You have a map and you can just do missions in there, gather resources and do a mission, you come back and you're looking at the map and that's it. Pretty much it's mission based. Occasionally you'll have to defend your main hub like shield generator where you can invite your buddies and that is like your permanent like fortress where you defend the main shield for your community and but overall it is just a bunch of missions and if you keep playing it for a while it can get repetitive because there's not much variety like I said yeah there are different enemy types but they aren't really super tough at the end of the day when you're fighting those like different enemies they don't feel much different 
than the other enemies other than the fact that some of them have more health and they have different ways of fighting but isn't much variety in that sense and also the different squads you can unlock and the different like side things you can unlock it just feels like needless micromanagement it kind of just sits there and because when you unlock these squads it brings up certain stats in your skills and certain stats for you personally but it doesn't really feel like it's making much of a difference when I'm out there. I'm sure it makes a small difference because it does bring up certain stats a little bit. But you don't really feel it. I feel like it's there just to be like, hey, you can get an epic or legendary version of that. Keep working hard to go get that. It doesn't really feel like it has a super big purpose. And the next thing is that playing by yourself in this game can be very... It's not bad, but you will get bored much quicker by yourself because of the fact that this game is such a co-op cooperative game playing by yourself or playing with random people that you meet just doesn't have as much fun as it is when you're playing with your friends with this game because this game at its core is a co-op tower tower defense resource type of game with different heroes and weapons and stuff like that so when you're doing it by yourself you're not really getting the full experience that you would get if you were playing with friends so if you're a person who doesn't have many people to play this game with I would say wait on it, wait and see if people start picking it up or getting it at when it's free to play. But if you do have people who play this game and bought it at the early access, hell yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun, great. But guys, at the end of the day, Fortnite, I it was tough for me to really give this game a grade because I was stuck between two rankings. But you know what, at the end of the day, Fortnite is a very fun, cooperative, tower defense, zombie horde-like game, Minecraft influence with a lot of fun crafting systems, a lot of a large variety in weapons, always feeling like it's rewarding you for playing it. And I did have a lot of fun with this game. I understand that this game has some flaws and it's difficult to say if you should buy this at early access because eventually in 2018 it is going to be free. So you know what? I'm going to say if you re if you have a, a decent amount of friends who want to play this game, I would say pick it up for the $40 to $60 package that they have. They have different packages of this game. If you have a couple friends that want to play, get the $40 to $60 version and you'll be fine. If you don't have people to play this game with, I would say wait until 2018 when it becomes free so you can check it out for yourself and then you can decide if you want to drop some money on this game. But still, this game at the end of the day... Fortnite. I had a lot of fun with it. I think it's a really fun, solid game. A person like me would definitely feel that the $60 I spent for this version was definitely well spent, even though it has some flaws. So I would give Fortnite a solid B-. Guys, that's my review for Fortnite. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was a really a little bit of a complicated game to talk about since it was a free since it is going to be free later on. And right now it's being paid early access so early on. I didn't know how to talk about it, but you know what? I feel satisfied with the way I did this review. I think I gave a lot of you a good idea of what to expect when you pay for this game and what you're going to get. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. My next movie review, in a couple hours, I'm going to be heading out to go see Atomic Blonde. Very excited to see that film. But let me know what you guys thought about Fortnite. This is a very curious game to me. Because some people think it's just, oh no, it's going to become free. Just don't touch it. Don't, you know, I'm going to wait till it becomes free. Some people out there are like, yeah. I'm going to pay for it. It looks cool. Awesome. I want to know what you guys think. See how many people out there are playing this game right now. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, guys.